Hi guys and welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. I'm Dawn and I'm here to ramble about books again. And today I'm here with a tag video. I was tagged by the awesome Joe at Joe Reads Books to do this. Um, I'm not sure who the original was but she does tag, she does list them I think. So I'll list both that and Joe's channel below. And if you haven't checked out Joe's channel you absolutely should. I always love her reviews. She does great hauls and I'm constantly adding books to my TBR that she recommends so you need to go check her out and unless you don't want to add anything to your TBR in which case why are you on booktube? Anyway so today's tag is the you haven't read that book tag and it's essentially books that I've read and loved that I'm constantly surprised that other people have not read. And I'm going to do this with a caveat because I think so some people had something to say about this tag in other people's um, iterations of it. These are not, this is not to say, oh my god, you haven't read this, you're an idiot, or oh my god, you haven't read this, you're not well read enough. It's just books that I'm constantly surprised that people haven't read because they're um, fairly well known books, fairly widespread. Um, and I will say that these are all, with the exception of one, um, American US writers so if you know you're from outside the US of maybe of course you would not have read these um, this is I'm usually just surprised when people from the US haven't read them um, because I know that there's a different there are different lists of classics there are different standards of classics and um, you know you know widely known books and things like that um, but to temper this I will do something at the end of the video to counteract this but anyway these are the five books that I'm always shocked that people have not read and um, you know if I'm gonna talk about books what am I gonna put in here the time machine I'm always shocked that people have not read the time machine it's really really short it's one of the classics of um, science fiction it's like the time travel classic from whence most time travel if not all time travel springs um, in sci-fi so yeah you should definitely pick this up it's only See, my Signet Edition minus the afterword of Penix is only 108 pages. And I think, I think there's even an introduction. Yeah, so there's an introduction that's taking up. So it's only 108 pages. This is the work of an afternoon or maybe two days. I don't know how fast you read, but oh my God, if you haven't read it, go get it. Because, you know, I'm always preaching the gospel of H.G. Wells. Another one I'm always surprised people haven't read is The Haunting of Hill House and I know that up until now I haven't read her other novels but this is pretty much her most famous novel. Um, people who've read Shirley Jackson have usually read The Lottery which is one of her short stories because they assign it in high school which is really strange if you've read that story you know why that's strange <laughs> but um, I'm really surprised that people haven't read The Haunting of Hill House. There have been two or three movies based on it and it's been around for quite a while and it's your essential creepy house story. So much is based on this. Um, the um, Rose Red, the miniseries that Stephen King wrote, it's partially based or inspired by um, Hill House. So it's it's a constant in pop culture and I'm just always surprised. Plus it's just a really good book. Really, really good book. <clears throat> Has one of the best opening no living, no live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids are supposed by some to dream. Hell House, not sane, stood by itself against its hills, holding darkness within. It had stood so for 80 years and might stand for 80 more. Within, walls continued upright, bricks met neatly, floors were firm, and doors were sensibly shut. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walked there, walked alone. Holy crap! That's the opening paragraph! It only gets better from there. Seriously. Go get it. And it's not that long. Seriously. This has an afterword and an introduction. So it's not that long. Go get it. Your library probably has it. And if they don't, they could probably get it from another library for you if you don't want to buy it. Another one I'm always surprised. Toni Morrison's Beloved. And please forgive my ugly um, movie cover. But yeah, I need to get a new edition of this. So good. Modern American classic. Toni Morrison is brilliant. Anything the woman writes is amazing. I can't wait to get to her new book that's sitting on my shelf. Um, I don't. I think there's maybe one or two of hers I haven't read, but I've read most of them, and this is my favorite. It contains the passage is too long for me to read to you, 
but to my mind contains one of the most beautiful passages in all of American literature and that's when baby Suggs is in the forest preaching. If I had, I don't quite have the gumption to have that entire passage tattooed on my back, but I absolutely would if I could work up the gumption for that. And if you've ever read this book, you know how long that passage is, so you know why it would take some working up. But it's a beautiful book. Amazing, amazing, amazing. The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. And I know that a lot of people in the U.S. are sh shy away from this because some people get assigned it in high school. We were never assigned it in high school. Um, I didn't read it till I went to college the first time. But, you know, and people assume that because it's something that gets assigned in high schools, that it's boring and only being assigned because it's a classic. But honestly, this is just a really good book. And I think the first time I read it um, in college, I, I wasn't as impressed with it. Um, I thought it was good. You know, I wasn't, you know, like, oh my god, this is a piece of crap. I, I liked it. But then I reread it for another class and just realized how friggin' brilliant this book is. And maybe it takes a couple of readings. Maybe it's one of those books that you can't read just once and appreciate. But um, I loved, loved this book, um, especially upon the second reading. And, you know, I will not get rid of this one. This is one of the books from one of my classes that I will not be getting rid of. And actually, I love this edition as well. It's one of the Penguin um, Great Books uh, editions. And it's just gorgeous. And it's just a good solid edition. And I still have all my tabs in it from that class. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. So yes, please, if you have not read this, please, please, please do yourself a favor and go pick it up. And the final one that I am always shocked and amazed and people haven't read is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. And I know a lot of people are picking it up now because her new one is coming out or the release, the releasing Ghost Set of Watchmen soon. So soon. Um, but, and I mean, maybe it's because I'm from Alabama and, you know, this is pretty much the state book, even though not officially, but it should be. Um, so we kind of it's they're, they're pretty much going to yank your Alabama card if you haven't read this and if you haven't just don't admit it in public because <laughs> they'll yank your Alabama card but uh, it's just honestly a good book it's just brilliant and it's it's complex and and simple at the same time which sounds like a really glib thing to say but it is and it's absolutely just a lovely book and it's just wonderful and you should definitely go check it out I, I know I don't even have to guess guaranteeing you pretty much every library in the country um, public library in the country is gonna have this um, but there are multiple cheap copies of this I guarantee you could probably find it used you probably know at least three people if you're a book person and are friends with book people you probably know two or three people who actually own this anyway and would let you borrow it uh, but just please go read it all the books I've mentioned please just go read them they are so good no shame no judgment at all none is meant I just really want people to read these books and I'm always shocked that you haven't been submitted you haven't been um, haven't experienced the wonder that is these that are these books okay now like I said in order to temper this I am going to do what Joe did Joe did a whole separate video but I'm just gonna tag it um, put it all into one so I'm also now gonna show you five books that people are always shocked that I have not read so and perhaps they do judge me I don't know I don't care I'm too old for that crap once you hit 30 it kind of is like I'm a grown-ass woman to do what I want and I'm 30 almost 36 so I'm well into my I'm a grown-ass woman to do what I want phase so this one is gonna be a shocker simply because I was a women's studies major and I still do a lot with um, feminist theory and queer theory or I'm trying to and that is half the sky turning oppression into opportunity for women worldwide by Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Wooden. Wooden? I don't know how to pronounce your last name I'm sorry I haven't read it. I own it. See? Step one. I have, I, I do own it. I'll eventually get to it. I promise. Uh, this one is one that I'm shocked I haven't read. And that's The Violent Buried Away by Flannery O'Connor. This is one of her two novels. Um, I have read Wise Blood many years ago, but I've never read this one. Um, I did pick up a used copy of this. I think it was in my last haul. I found this at the Goodwill bookstore in our town. And um, it's actually in a really good condition too, considering usually when you find literary fiction in the used bookstores around here, it's pretty marked up and stuff because it's a college town. So um, this one's pretty clean. So yay. But I, I don't know why I haven't read this. Another one, which you're probably going to hear a lot about from here on out. It's going to kind of be paired up with the time machine. That's Shirley Jackson's The Sundial. 
I, I don't know why it took me 35 years to get to the well I mean I couldn't have read it when I was little but why it took me so long to get to this book it's brilliant I love it it's funny it's just it's awesome yeah I don't know why I haven't read it this is another one that people the last two were books that I'm shocked I haven't read um nobody else really seemed shocked but uh, the first one and then the, this one and the last one are ones that people are always really surprised that I haven't read and I've gotten judged a couple of times or I've gotten that judgy stare the book thief by Marcus Susak I know I'm the last person in the entire universe especially on booktube to have read this but again I own it so I I, I will read it eventually even though I hate this cover it's a movie cover we know I hate these but um I will read it don't judge sorry and the last one I don't I think I actually have a copy of The Handmaid's Tale and I forgot to bring it over here but I've read no Margaret Atwood not ever I'm you know I think she has short stories somewhere I may have read a short story honestly by accident not even realizing it was Margaret Atwood it's not that I have anything against her it's not that I don't intend to read her I just um yeah read no Margaret Atwood so yeah those are the five books I'm always shocked people haven't read and the five books people are always surprised that I haven't read and um, I don't think I'm gonna tag anybody individually because I don't know who's done this yet or not but if you're watching this you want to do it consider yourself tagged and let me know below if you do it because I'd love to see what you have to say I'd love to see the books that you pick out and you don't have to do the second half um, the tag is just the five books you're always surprised people haven't read so thanks for tuning in guys and I really hope you guys are having an awesome week and I will see you next time bye